We are going to show you the biggest fly manufacturer you may not have heard about. Dude, that's a big brown yeah. You might see here, it's a little bit greener than Utah. We are in fact living free and not dying. It means we're in New Hampshire, in Claremont to be exact. Let's go check this place out. Hint, we're at Fulling Mill. Hey guys, welcome Nick. to Fulling Mill. How Good you doing? See so, we are at Fulling Mill. Big fly manufacturer you may not have heard about. A lot of you now have. One of our biggest vendors. And we're going to take a little tour and see where all the magic happens here. Nick is the president. He's also very fishy. So, very fishy. Nick's going to give us a little rundown of Fulling Mill's history and kind of what they do here. Well, come back this way, guys. This is the warehouse. Obviously loaded with flies, as you can see here. Lots of fly fish food flies. Um, most of the, this area up here is all flies. And then when we move to the back, we move to the hooks, we move to the beads, we move to the boxes. The company actually goes back to the 1930s. Back in 1930, a guy called Dennis Whitman uh, was a rugby player in Britain, had a, almost a paralyzing accident, decided to go to Africa to get better, took up fly tying, got a little obsessed with it, started his own little business for customers and friends, ended up servicing about 20 countries, and then started working for a colonel called Andrew Unwin in the 60s. And that's really what started the whole process in Africa. Started a big business servicing countries all over the um, world. Andrew's son, Barry, started distribution of the flies in the UK. And that company was called Falling Mill. As his father got older, he bought out his father. And so Falling Mill um, now had the factory and the distribution. And then we came to the US in uh, 2004. Originally, we were supplying all the flies for Orvis. From there, we've expanded and now we're working with uh, dealers across the country, especially really cool dealers like Fly Fish Food and other stores like that. Hey, Nick, one of the things that, that we hear about a lot is the, the African factories. I think that there are a lot of offshoots in Kenya, mm -hmm. but we've talked about this at length like what yep. can you what can you talk to as far as the that operation in Kenya and the employees those types of things yeah we have we um, employ about um, 250 tires in our factory they're all employees of um, fulling mill so nobody's a contractor everybody's paid um, as what is regarded as the highest um, pay rates in the area everybody has health insurance and what's really unique for Africa everybody has a pension program so that when they retire from the company they're leaving on a really good um, pension program and we have an in-house medical system at the factory and so forth so if you go to the factory it's a super vibrant place um, a lot of noise a lot of laughing um, it's, it's a great place to be around um, nobody fishes but everybody loves to see your pictures of your fish when you go there and you know see what the flies have been used in that and we just added a big new extension there at the moment most of the tires that there have been between 15 to 20 years we're obviously bringing on new flyers all the time but we don't anymore put a lot of time in just a training lots and lots of new people because we have a very strong um, content of very experienced tires which is obviously very ben beneficial for us and I'll be back over there in October so it was a fun visit to go and see everybody uh, when I'm over there one of the things that I've noticed is when we send you samples of flies the samples that we get back from the factory in Kenya is I need to up my game because these are oh, so yeah. good you know so. Yeah, we have a couple of tires that um, are, you know, the really top of the game fly tying. And we'll just go there with new samples from you or whoever, complicated or uncomplicated. Mm. Give them the samples. They'll tie up the masters and they'll tie them up so fast, even if they've never seen the fly before. And it's so perfect. And that's the masters that then go into the system that everybody else works off. I had no idea how that's how it worked. And, you know, the quality of the fully mill flies we've gotten is, is definitely indicative of that skill level for sure. Good. I mean, nice to hear that. Okay, we're just going to go through and look at some of the flies that uh, that are in here. I think we have like 150 or something flies yeah. in the catalog. So the, just so you know, the process, like when we design a fly and submit it to Fulling Mill, assuming they accept it and put it in the catalog, they're the ones that produce it. We don't tie our own flies for uh, sales. Um, so as we come around here, we're going to see a few of the flies that we've designed, submitted, and now Fulling Mill ties in Kenya and they make it here to New Hampshire. We do the order and then from there, when you order the flies from us, 
gets out to you. We've been super happy with Fulling Mill with how they've done with our flies. They tie them great. The delivery is awesome. So we have a strong relationship with them and we're excited to get a lot more in their catalog too. Starting off right here, this is a fly that you probably don't want to fish. No, just kidding. This is Curtis's Aerobatus. We have the Ice Pupa. That's one of mine. Arizona Hair. Over here, we got Cheech Leeches, Curtis's Huevo Frito, Baby Fat Minnows, bunch of backstock. Oh yeah. It's cool to see that everything's just here in stock. Stuff like, you know, Tim Flagler from Tightline Productions, great fly tire, really good dude. He's got a bunch of stuff in. Articulated trout sliders, El Sculpito. If you haven't fished that one, you need to. Right now is cicada season, so lots of project cicadas going out, looks like. And these little green indicators mean they've got a bunch more back in the back. Right behind you. And by back, I mean behind my back. Holy moly, that's, that's a lot like of cicadas. That's like a box of Project Cicadas right there. That's enough to last us a week or two. Pripples, Mega Mudas. These ones are hot. This is actually a really good cicada variation, the black and orange. All these videos are on our website too, so that's what's cool. I think it's cool because we can just tell Fulling Mill, hey, if you want this fly, Here's show your people the video. <laughs> And it's been awesome working with them um, just because like sometimes when you submit a fly, it's you have to provide all the materials and you have to do detailed instructions. And these guys have been awesome to work with with that because, you know, they, they see a fly that has potential and they take the initiative just to take it and put it together. So as well as doing a lot of flies, we sell an amazing number of beads, uh, dumbbells and hooks. So walking down through here, we have all the beads. And as you can see, we have plenty of them. Backstop all up here. So when you lose all your Euro nymphs, we got plenty of beads for you to pick up and buy. And as we come down through here, we move into the hooks. Hooks are a very strong seller for us, particularly the uh, Jig Force hooks. And then moving around to the other side, we come on to a lot of the new um, the drop beads, which have done really good for us. And then the new dumbbells, the tungsten dumbbells, which people are really loving. And then a big program for us has been the boxes. Um, we just had a shipment come in. We have the guide box here, a great general box for just for storing flies and a backup. Works great in a boat box or just on the shelf as backup. And we have the hopper box, nice high clearance. Um, takes your big dry flies, no problem at all. Also a great smaller streamer box. And then the classics for every Euro weenie. We have the Tactical Max, which will hold as many Euro nymphs as you can possibly want and more. And then probably my favorite is the Stealth, fairly slim box. Take a good number of flies for a, a good day on the water. You can still lose a lot of flies and have plenty left in your box with that one. And of course, the Pocket Box. A great little box for hitting a small stream after work or something like that. Also with these drop beads, these are the offset beads that we've used in a couple tutorials like Lance's Half Wit. You can get these on our website. Link is below or just go to flyfishfood.com. But they have them in small sizes like 2.5 all the way up to 4. And they're great to put a little extra balance into your flies and add some additional weight. I've measured these against slotted beads and they are heavier. Okay, here's a cool hack when you're tying streamers. Most of the dumbbell eyes we get are either brass or lead. Foley Mills doing tungsten dumbbell eyes. And so that's a way that you could tie the exact same fly that has like a brass eye and get different depths out of your fly. So have some tungsten, have some brass, just like you would like a Euro nymph with different size beads. But tungsten dumbbell eyes are awesome. And they have them painted, non-painted, all the good stuff. So we're stoked on those. All right, crazy Tom Rosenbauer, heckler supreme. He's really good at talking trash while I'm breaking fish off, but he also has really cool flies of fulling mill and we will have a full range of his patterns very soon, but hoppers, caddis, little soft hackles. It's kind of cool to see his stuff in here as well. It's actually breaking fly rods, not fish off. Breaking fly rods? Yeah. Yeah, I did them both. Break them? And so what? Breaking fish off. Jeez. Oh, yeah, I guess you did break the fish off too. Jeez, I'm gonna try to find a different parent for you so you can get adopted somewhere else. <laughs>